This is Ray Mosholder. I was intrigued by this article and one to follow. It is an article that says that Israel has only had two school attacks in 44 years. Now, granted, Israel's a little sliver of land compared to the United States. But let's look at this from their perspective. Because they are a land that has been attacked and attacked and attacked by the Palestinians and others, and they very well could have lost their country quickly, certainly their school children. So let's take a look at this. The heading is Israel has only had two school attacks in 44 years. Here's how they make sure their kids are safe. This is written by Becky Loggia from Western Journal. In the wake of the Parkland, Florida school shooting that claimed 17 lives last week, there's been a renewed debate surrounding gun control and children's safety, leading some to make a comparison to the changes that Israel made in response to a terror attack more than four decades ago. In 1974, Palestinian terrorists took over the Nativ Meyer Elementary School in what has been called the Maylot Massacre, which left 22 children dead and many others injured. The attack forced Israel to come up with a solution in order to prevent such a situation from ever happening again. The nation requires its schools to have a security system, and that policy is still going strong after 40 years. The results are clearly evident as there have only been two successful attacks at Israeli schools since 1974, according to Dr. Ted Noel, writing an American thinker. Noel wrote that Quote, in both cases, the bad guys were killed by armed teachers. According to Red State, Israel's Ministry of Education funds school security, which ranges from shelters and fences to armed and trained guards at every gate. To take it a step further, Israel has also prepared its students and teachers for the slight chance of a gunman who does get through security by teaching them to be proactive in times of terror, by barricading a door, or sensing the ripe opportunity to get away safely. The guards on the doorsteps of Israel's schools are also trained to look for any suspicious activity, which usually deters anyone with ill intent from entering in the first place. That added layer of protection, argues Noel, is a proactive step in shielding children from the gunman. Once the shooters are past school gates, the damage is irreversible and quick to happen since any and all faculty and students immediately become targets. Quote, the Israelis saw this and got busy, Noel wrote. They knew that the vast majority of terror attacks are stopped, not by police, but by armed civilians. So they started training teachers in firearms use. Those teachers took out the bad guys in the two incidents since the Maylot massacre. Noel wrote that once a shooter is no longer in free fire zone, the situation and the possible outcome is likely to change as he becomes a potential target. And on top of that, he doesn't know which of the staff might be ready to shoot or where they might be coming from. In short, only an idiot 
would try to shoot up a school with a trained staff of shooters? Said no. This sentiment was echoed by CNN's Steve Cortez, who suggested that guns may not be the problem in the U.S. as much as America's lack of security when it comes to its children. Cortez compared Wednesday's shooting not just with Israel, but a disaster that didn't involve any bullets whatsoever. Since the awful Our Lady of the Angels Elementary School fire of 1958, which killed 92 students and three nuns, there has not been a large casualty school fire in America. Cortez says, why? Because we took myriad precautions since then. Better fire exits, more extinguishers and sprinklers, routine fire drills and so forth. He said, water squelches a fire. And only a gunman, I would argue, can stop another gunman. The recent conversation around gun control suggests that an added layer of protection would not only improve school security, but also prevent the government from infringing on the Second Amendment, as well as prove that guns aren't necessarily the problem. People are. Cortez added to this idea when he argued that stricter gun control laws have failed the world, as seen in the 2015 Paris Medical nightclub attack and numerous other incidents, as those who wish harm upon others will always find a way to do so. Evildoers, by definition, do not respect our rules and will find ways to skirt them. Cortez added, suggesting the only surefire way to combat these horrific acts is to improve school security and put America's children first. Let's value our children like the treasure they are and guard them accordingly, he said. How? Let's start with key cards. Fences, entry checks, biometric scanners, and yes, armed guards, and a lot of them. The school resource deputy at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School waited outside the school building as the shooting unfolded last Wednesday. Scott Peterson, the deputy, never went in after taking a position on the west side of the building. Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel told about this in a news conference. Peterson resigned on Thursday after he was suspended without pay by Israel pending an internal, and Israel is the sheriff, pending an internal investigation into his actions during the Portland, Parkland it is, somebody re wrote this badly, the Parkland, Florida school shooting that left 17 people dead. The sheriff said Peterson was eligible for retirement. Israel made the decision to suspend Peterson, who was armed and in uniform at the time of the shooting, after interviewing the deputy and reviewing footage and witness statements. What I said was a deputy arrive at the west side of Building 12, take up a position, Israel said of the video, and he never went in. President Donald Trump takes part in a listening session on gun violence with tremendous interest. President Trump suggests bonuses for teachers 
who get gun training. And the sheriff told reporters Peterson should have gone in, addressed the killer, killed the killer. Instead, the deputy waited outside for about four minutes. And during that time, Israel said Peterson got on his radio and took a position where he could see the western entry of the building. Asked how he felt watching the footage, Israel said, devastated, sick to my stomach. There are no words. This family has lost their children. We lost coaches. I've been to the funerals. I've been to the homes where they sit and shiver. I've been to the vigils. It's just, there are no words. Israel, the sheriff, also said two other deputies have been placed on restricted duty while the sheriff's office investigates their actions during calls to the gunman's home before the shooting. Since 2008, he said the sheriff's office was involved in 23 calls involving either Nicholas Cruz, the shooter, or his brother. During some of the calls, which were both in person and on the phone, deputies met with Cruz's mother. After speaking with the Internal Affairs Department, Israel decided to put the deputies on restrictive duty while his office investigates whether or not they could have done more or should have done more. Security footage was on 20-minute delay during the shooting. And officials also reported Thursday that surveillance footage from the school shooting was not shown live at all as responding officers had initially thought. Nicholas Cruz appears on court, in court in Fort, according to Coral Springs Police Chief. This is badly written, and I'm so sorry, but it'll give us some idea. Nicholas Cruz appeared in court in, according to, and then it says in Fort, and then doesn't have any finished his sentence. According to Coral Springs Police Chief Tony Pustuzzi, the footage had been rewound and police were watching it on a 20-minute delay, leading them to believe that the gunman Nicholas Cruz was still in the building when he was long gone. The delay never put us in a situation where any kids' lives were in danger any teachers' lives were in danger, Bastizzi said at a news conference Thursday afternoon. When officers arrived on the scene of the shooting, he said they wanted to gain access to the security footage to learn what happened and where the perpetrator could be. But last Wednesday, the footage was rewound. Bastizzi as D.C. told reporters. And at some point there was a miscommunication and officers believed they were watching real-time footage. The NRA, the National Rifle Association's Executive Vice President and CEO, Wayne Lapierre, spoke during the 2018 Conservative Political Action Conference, PAC, on February 22nd, which was today. The issue was more of a communications failure on who was reviewing the tape, letting our guys know that it was a 20-minute delay in what they were reviewing, Bustisi said. The Sun Sentinel first reported the delay in surveillance footage. The rewound footage did not put any lives in danger, Pustisi emphasized, but it did cause 
some real confusion when officers entered the school. At first, the guys are hearing, Oh, he's on the second floor, Bustisi said in the news conference. Well, it's not true because we have people on the second floor and the people are saying, no, he's not on the second floor. The Broward County School District said in a statement that its security system footage could be reviewed in both real time or be rewound to see events that were previously recorded. During the immediate response to the event, the system was being viewed in real time, and the recorded footage was being viewed to retrace the actions of the shooter. The statement said, adding that the district no longer had access to the footage or the server it was stored on because investigating authorities now have it. The gunman was already at Walmart, while the rewound footage might not have increased the number of casualties, it did hamper, hamper efforts to locate the gunman. Somebody would say, he's on the second floor, and we had guys on the second floor saying he wasn't. That's when we figured out there was a tape delay, Bustisi told the Sun Sentinel. According to, to police scanner traffic from the streaming website Broadcastify, at 2.43 p.m. on February 14th, police found someone to give them access to the school security footage. I got a guy here outside the building that can get cameras, says one voice. We're going to go inside and go get to the cameras. By 2.54 p.m., police were watching the gunman make his way through the building, according to the dispatch audio, but the suspect had fled the building 26 minutes earlier at 2.28 p.m., according to a preliminary timeline provided by the Broward County Sheriff's Office. By 2.15 at uh, 2.50, that is, 2.50 p.m., the suspect had already bought a drink at a Subway restaurant inside a Walmart store and left on foot four minutes before scanner traffic said the gunman was still on the second floor of the school. At 3.02 p.m., when the Broward County timeline says crews briefly stopped at a nearby McDonald's, an officer says the suspect dropped a bag near a stairwell. Another officer asks if the footage is a recording. Yes, sir. It's about a 20-minute delay, the first officer says. They're following him on video on the camera. They had, had him exiting the building, running south. And finally, at 3.41 p.m., Cruz was identified and taken into custody. So is the answer, Israel's answer, put more guards throughout the school at every gate, arm the teachers? What's your take on all this? Let me know on comment.